welcome to another interesting set of questions based on absolute value function. We'll try to see how do we solve equations and inequalities related to absolute value function in this particular video. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Now, let us enjoy the journey of success. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. Here is a worksheet for you. In this, we'll solve equations and inequalities related to absolute value function. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. It is assumed that you know how to solve linear inequalities and also what are absolute value functions. So based on that assumption, here are 10 questions for you. To begin with, we'll see how to solve absolute value of x equals to 5 and what does it mean when we say absolute value of x is less than or equal to 5. And then we'll actually begin with uh, questions based on absolute function. x minus 2 equals to 6, x minus 2 less than 6. The idea to give them in the sets like this is to relate that while solving inequalities, it is important to note that we have to also solve the equation. So I'm taking them side by side. Question 5 and 6, this time, within the absolute function, we have 2x plus 4 equals to 10. And we have 2x plus 4 less than or equal to 10. Question number 7 and 8, within absolute function, we have incorporated fractions this time. And in question 9 and 10, we have, in addition, one more constant. Absolute value of x plus 1 plus 2 less than or equal to 7. 15 minus absolute value of x plus 1 greater than 7. So once you know how to solve these basic questions on absolute function, you can actually solve many others. In our second worksheet, we'll get into more complicated kind of fractions or kind of questions will, will involve more than one absolute function. Clear? Let us see and understand how to work with these absolute value equations and inequalities now. You can always pause the video, answer the questions, and then look into my suggestions. To begin with, Let's try to get some basics, right? So we'll now get some basics and then begin with the solution. Perfect. So when I say absolute value of x is equal to 5, what does it really mean? When I say absolute value of x is equal to 5, we know that minus 5 absolute value is also 5, right? Of course, 5 absolute value is also 5. And therefore, we have two solutions. And we say, well, x is equal to plus or minus 5. So very easy. That is how we normally do it. We can also represent this absolute function on a coordinate plane. In that case, what does it mean? Let's try to see that part also. The absolute function has a vertex. For x equals to x, absolute x, this is my absolute x function. Now, in that case, let me draw a better line here. For absolute x, they are symmetric, right? So kind of like this, even symmetry. So we have a function. When we say equals to 5, we are looking for a value like this, right? So this is y equals to 5. And we know it corresponds to the two x values, which are minus 5 and plus 5. So these are the solutions for the given equation. 
So that gives you kind of basics on how do we solve this equation. Now, let us also look into absolute value function inequality for a moment. So inequality, now we are saying that absolute value of x is less than equal to 5. So when I say less than equal to 5, we are looking for something in between, in between, right? So that means like this. That is what we are looking into. So that is what I am saying is absolute value of x is less than equal to 5. You get the idea. So within, so this means we are talking about within, in between you can say, right? So when we solve inequalities, we could actually write this as the x value is less than or equal to 5. However, it should be greater than or equal to minus 5. Do you see that? So we get a double inequality. So that is a double inequality. That is how you could directly get your answer in between. On a number line, if I have to represent this solution, let us say this is my number line. In that case, I can say, well, let this be 0. Then here we have minus 5 and here we have plus 5. What we are talking about is in between minus 5 and plus 5. But we are saying less than equal to. Since we are saying equal to, we will fill this up. So we have the filled in circles including right so including both plus and minus 5 so that becomes a solution on a number line and we could also provide a solution on interval using this notation right from minus 5 to plus 5 square brackets means including right so the solution here is including plus and minus 5. That is what we mean when I am using the closed brackets like this. You get the idea. Or filled in circles. Because of equal to. Right? Do you understand? Because of this, less than equal. So I hope that gives you a concept. We also understand that the inequality solution can be provided on a number line or on an interval as shown here. We could also write this solution as this. So there are three ways of providing solution. One, using inequalities. Two, using the number line. And three, using the interval notation. So these are the three ways in which we can provide these solutions, right? So keep all these things in mind while answering the questions. So let's begin with this third question and the fourth question now. I hope the basic concept is clear. So let's first solve the equation x minus 2 equals to 6. Now what we have learned just now is that x minus 2 equals to 6 actually give rise to two equations. One is that x minus 2 equal to 6, but x minus 2 can also be equal to minus 6, right? Since the absolute value of minus 6 is also equal to 6, you get the idea. And therefore, the inside function, which is x minus 2, can be minus 6. Is this clear, right? So, this visual representation gives you an idea of the basic concept. So, we will solve simultaneously both these and find our solution. So, simple as that. You know how to do equations. We will add 2 on both the sides. We get 6 plus 2 as one solution as 8. The other solution will be x equals to minus 6 plus 2 and that gives you x equals to minus 4. And therefore, my answer here is x is equal to 8 or it is minus 4. Is this part clear to you? Perfect. So, we have the solution 
of the equation. If I want to solve this inequality now, which is x minus 2 is less than, then what are we looking at? We are looking at within, right? Within plus and minus. So, to solve this, we will say, well, now x minus 2 should be less than 6. However, it should be greater than minus 6. You get the idea. So, from the basic concept of within, we know that this value x minus 2 has to be less than 6, but then it also means that it is greater than minus 6. You get the idea. So, that is how the absolute function inequality will be redefined. And now, we will solve it. How can we solve it? We can add 2 to all the three terms as you do for linear inequalities. Right? So, we will add 2 and then we have x minus 2 plus 2 and we have 6 plus 2, right? And therefore, we get minus 4 here and we get x in the center and 8. So, we have our solution that x is between minus 4 and 8. You see, the solution matches with our equation. The only thing is, we are not talking about inequality. So, you can now correlate the two things on a number line. If I have to show this solution, how am I going to show? Well, let us think about this as minus 4 and that as 8, these two positions, right? In that case, let us say this is our 0. We are saying that the solution for us is anywhere in between. You get the idea. Not including minus 4 and 8 in between, not including, since it is less than within this period. So, from here also, I could have got a direct solution of the inequality. So, sometimes you can think about solving an equation and then the inequality. However, you also see that solving inequality directly is also very easy, correct? Now, in interval notation, how am I going to write the solution? Well, the answer will be, these are the brackets which shows not including. So, we have from minus 4 to 8, right? So, this is not including. Is that clear to you? So, these are the different types of brackets which we use. So, you could provide solution as this which results into, rather, I should say, that is one solution, correct? This is the second solution, that is the third. All represent same thing. Either one of them could be your solution. Is that clear to you? So, I hope with these four examples, you have seen how equation relates to the inequality, and when we use the sign less than, it means within right? In between, that is, right? And when we say equal to, it means include. That is the whole idea from these examples and I hope you got the concept. Let's move forward and practice with some more questions. So, when I say an equation, we are now very clear that it really means that 2x plus 4 absolute value equals to 10 means this could be equal to plus 10 or this could be equal to minus 10. So, we are actually solving these two equations simultaneously, right, one after the other I should say. So, to solve this, what will you get? Well, clearly, we have 2x equals to 10 minus 4 which is 14 and therefore x will be 14 over 2 which is 7. So, that is one solution and the other solution will be 2x equals to minus 10 minus 4 which is, sorry, the first one was not 14. Let me, let me redo this. Okay. 10 minus 4 is 6, you know, right. So, x is equals to 6 by 2 which is equal to 3. Now, here it is minus 14, right? Minus 10 minus 4 is minus 14 and x is equals to minus 14 by 2, which gives us minus 7. And therefore, we have our solution 
that x is equal to 3 or minus 7. Does make sense. You can always check your solution. Let us check this time. So, if I substitute 3 here, absolute value 2 times 3 plus 4 gives me what? Gives me absolute value of 10. So, we get it. This is 10. The other one, minus 7. So, let me write this here. Absolute value of 2 times minus 7 plus 4 will give me what? It gives me minus 10, which is also 10. You get the idea. So, both are correct solutions. Now, we know that the equation is satisfied with this. So, we kind of know what the solution is. So, we can actually directly write the solution here. On a number line, I am showing you that this solution should be, since it is equal to filled in circles, right, filled in circles, filled in circles, and the boundaries are from minus 7 to 3. You get the idea. So, that becomes the solution. So, this is on number line. This is type 1 of the solutions which we had been talking about. But let us now really find the solution with using inequalities. We have 2x plus 4 less than equal to 10. Now, it becomes a linear inequality greater than or equal to minus 10. To solve, we will take away 4 first, right? So, we have 10 minus 4 less than or equal to 2x plus 4 minus 4 less than or equal to 10 minus 4, correct? So, minus 14 less than or equal to 2x less than or equal to 6. Dividing by 2, we get 7 less than or equal to, right? x and less than or equal to 3. So, straight away, we get a second solution. This is using inequality. Now, this could be written in an interval form. So, now I will provide you with the third solution, which I say interval. Since we are including, we will put a square bracket from minus 7 to 3, including both the values, and we get the third type of solution. Now, in the questions, it could be specified that you have to write your solution in this fashion. In that case, you have to use that particular notation. So, we have three notations to represent the solution algebraically. Let us move forward and we have now a question involving fractions. It is the same thing. Now, let us see how do we solve this. So, we are now taking two separate inequalities. One is less than or equal to 11 and the absolute function is 2 over 3x plus 3. The other one is half x plus 3 greater than 7. Now, I will like you to solve them. So, we have done a couple of examples with less than or equal to, which is within, right? So, this is within. What should be greater than? It is beyond. We say away from. So, we will look into that concept in the next three questions. Let us complete the within part now. So, you know within means we have an equation which is 2 over 3 x plus 3 less than equal to 11. So, it should be greater than equal to minus 11. You get the idea. Now, we could separate, we could deduct, subtract minus, subtract 3. So, we get minus 3 on all the three terms plus 3, oh, sorry, this is x in between and minus 3, right? And we have 11 minus 3. So, that gives us minus 14 and we now have 2 over 3x less than or equal to 8, 11 minus 3. Now, we can uh, multiply each term by 3 over 2. So, we can do minus 14 times 3 over 2. So, we have 2 over 3x times 3 over 2, 8 times 3 over 2, correct. So, that gives you 7 times 3, which is 21, negative. Here, we are left with x, that was the idea, 
and here dividing by 2, 4 times 3 is 12. So, that becomes our solution. This is one of the solutions. You could represent this solution in any form. So, this time I will only write it in the interval notation. So, I am writing this as including since we have inequality which says less than equal to, right. So, that is in interval notation. Perfect. So, I think you are also getting familiar to the three ways of representing the solution of inequalities when we solve them algebraically. Remember, inequalities can also be represented graphically. So, that is why I am saying solving algebraically. Now, away from, that means away, greater than, right. So, when I say greater than, it really means that we are looking for two points on a number line which are not within, right. So, it is not within. So, this time we are looking for something which is kind of away from, you get the idea. So, this is the concept, not within, away, greater than. So, that is what we are doing. So, that means what? Well, that means that we are solving two inequalities. One of them is half of x plus 3 is greater than 7. And on the other hand, we are saying half of x plus 3 is less than minus 7. You get the idea. So, these are the two inequalities which you need to solve now. Now, these are linear inequalities. You have already mastered those skills. Else, you can look into my videos on that. Perfect. Now, let us see how do we solve this. Well, half of x is less than taking 3 on the other side, minus 7, minus 3. So, we have half of x is less than minus 10. x is less than minus 10 times 2, which is negative 20. So, we get one part of the solution. So, this point here is actually negative 20. You get the idea. So, it is good to visualize it even before you start writing the solution. Now, greater than part, we have half of x is greater than 7 minus 3, which is 4 you know, right? So, half of x is greater than 4. So, x is greater than 4 times 2, which is 8. And so, that is your other part. So, now we clearly see our solution on the number line. So, I really appreciate representing the solution on a number line even if it is not asked for since it gives a visual representation. So, I want you to look into this visual representation. That will make things absolutely clear if you are a beginner in understanding inequalities based on absolute value function, right? So, this video is actually meant for students who are beginners on absolute value or others who are returning back to algebra after a long time. So, right, we have our equation. How do we write this in interval form? So, that is what we will now look into. So, how do we write this? We are seeing less than, right? Do you see this arrow going towards minus infinity. So, minus infinity can never be included. So, we have minus infinity to minus 20 and 20 is also not included. And then we have 8 to positive infinity. You get the idea. That is how you have to see in the center. You can use the symbol union or. So, both are the, the solutions. You get the idea. So, both are the solutions. You could have this or that right? So, both of them are the solutions, right? Okay. Sometimes we also write this as a semicolon. We may use a semicolon or a comma in between representing both as the solutions. So, the solution is I should use and here, right? So, uh, but and is preferred for intersection. So, I will write or. So, both are the solutions, right? So, that is how we will represent and this is your interval notation. Is that clear to you? So, we have a number line representing the solution and also the interval. That is how we do. Last two questions 
based on greater than and less than inequality combined together. So I like you to now pause the video, answer these two questions. The only complexity here is we have an additional term. So we have to go one more step. So let me do that step for you so that you can continue beyond that, correct? So the first step will be we have our absolute value function, absolute value of x plus 1. We'll take 2 to the other side. We'll say less than or equal to 7 minus 2. So we have now simplified this a bit, written this as the inequality which we had been working with for so long, correct? The other one is minus, right? So it is better to take the inequality to the other side. We'll say 15, bring 7 here, and then we say greater than absolute value of x plus 1. Now, 15 minus 7 is 8, and so 8 is greater than absolute value of x plus 1. Well, when 8 is greater than absolute value, that means absolute value is less than 8, right? You could also write this as absolute value of x plus 1 is less than 8. Does it make sense to you? And then solve this one. So, now we have two inequalities which are both kind of less than, okay? So, you can easily solve less than really means what? It means within, right? So, we have x plus 1 is less than or equal to 5 and greater than or equal to minus 5, correct? On the other hand, we have x plus 1, which is less than 8, but greater than minus 8. So, these are the steps involved. I'm kind of reviewing with you the concepts which we have learned. So, now we can take away 1. So, as soon as we take away 1, minus 5 minus 1 is less than or equal to x plus 1 minus 1, and this is 5 minus 1. So, we have minus 6 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. You can write this using the notations which we have learned, and here is 1 of x, which is using the interval itself. The other one, we will subtract 1 first, and then we will get our answer directly, correct? So, 8 minus 1, so we have minus 9 less than, x is greater than minus 9 and less than 7. So, that becomes the solution which could be written as not including, right? So, minus 9 to 7. Is that clear to you? Now, here are some more questions for you to practice. So, the questions could be, let us say, absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than, let us say, 5, right? So, we have another question here, absolute value of x minus 3, let's say 2x minus 3 is less than 7. And here is a quick question for you. If I have absolute value of x is less than, let us say, minus 5, then what is the solution? I could also have a question that absolute value of x is greater than, let's say, 0. In that case, what is the solution, correct? Think about these two equations. When I say absolute value is less than minus, is it possible? No, it is not possible. So, for this, we have no solution. But do you understand? It is always positive and therefore, this is never true. But when we say it is greater than 0, it means what? It means that the solution is everything but not 0, correct? Very important question. So, the solution for this is from minus infinity to 0 and then from 0 to infinity, right? 0 is not a part of solution for this one, right? So, let me make a note here. So, x belongs to real numbers where x is not equal to 0. So, that is what we are saying and that is a set notation which you could also use for representing the solution of absolute value functions. Is that all clear to you? So, with that, we come to an end. We began with the basic concepts and then we did solve some inequalities, may, most of them related to the less than, which is within, and some with greater than, which is beyond, right? So, these are very important concepts. I hope it makes sense. Here, once again, let me just tell you. Let me give you some more questions to work with. 
Let's take an example with greater than because since I didn't take much in this. So let me give you two more examples to end this particular video. So we'll talk about absolute value of x minus 5 greater than, let us say, a value which is, which is 15. Now in that case, we are trying to solve two inequalities. One is absolute value of x minus 5 is greater than 15 and the other one is that the x minus 5 value is less than minus 15, correct? This is the concept. So, so on a number line, visualize the solution first and that is we are looking for something away, right? So, that means we are looking for these two points and we have to go away from them. That is the concept. When you say greater than, so it could be either side, right? So, away from. not within, beyond, right? That is the concept. So, now it becomes simple. So, we have x is less than taking minus 5 to this side becomes plus 5. And so, we have x is less than minus 10. And on the other hand, we have x greater than 15 plus 5, which gives us x is greater than 20. Get the idea. So, the two points here are minus 10 and 20. So, we are saying that the values from minus infinity to minus 10 union and from 20 to plus infinity. So, it's beyond this limit of minus 10 and 20 away from. So, that is how it is represented. Correct? So, the last question is for you to practice. We have 2x plus 3 is greater than 6. So, you need to figure out how do we solve this and let this be your practice question. With this, we end our video. I hope you understand all the basic concepts and simple methods to solve absolute value related inequalities along with equations since they are very much connected. In case you really want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given, right? So, so that is important. You can always send here an email to learn more. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.